Hello, hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Fine, I'm fine. I've got to say, I love the show. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you've got some of the best lines, I have to say. <laughs> you got the giggles when you were filming. You must have, surely. Uh, surely we do, because I think also the show lives in this interesting combination world that some scenes are quite serious and very heartfelt and then there are other moments that are really quite hilarious so um it is fun when we get the to escape into the comedy of the show and lean into that so i do enjoy playing mrs dickinson and i enjoy bringing out her sense of humor especially because i've come to learn that the real mrs dickinson had quite a dark sharp sense of humor which i appreciate and hope gets brought out more as we develop these characters I'm not so sure she's aware of her sense of humor in the show, though. <laughs> I agree. I don't think she's fully aware of it. But when it comes out, uh, I like sort of the, uh, the, the tone that it takes and can, and can change the tone of the room with just one of her sentences. <laughs> what else was it about the show and about the character that made you want to do it? I, when I first read the script, I just thought it was so unique. It was so different than anything I had read. And the show is is different. It's it's wacky and it's strange. And even sometimes when we're filming it, I'm not even sure which tone we're living at at which time completely. Elena Smith, who created the show, knows every single moment exactly what she's trying to create. So she's a great helm to guide us as her artists working with her. Um, I love the modern day slant. I really love the music, which I think is such a large part of the show, um, a character in the show, really. And what bridges us to using sort of the life and work of Emily Dickinson um, as a reflectant, maybe even a funhouse mirror of what's happening for, uh, with people today. And so I, I love that combination. I love the fact that Mrs. Dickinson is so house proud and wants to be the best housewife in, in the county. I mean, yes. do you subscribe to her view <laughs> or do you go down Emily's road of getting somebody to do it? I mean, assuming you'd have time to do housework anyway. Yes. Well, I do think it was uh, Mrs. Dickinson's entire pride and joy. Um, she, uh, any of those housework books and um, being a good housewife was the Bible of life to her. And, and her, her real uh, sense of accomplishment and pride. So I find when, um, when they, I find it sad for Mrs. Dickinson when they try to strip that away from her, which was a point of a large amount of conflict for Emily senior and Emily junior um, in season one. In season two, I think we have gotten used to the fact that we're gonna have a maid in the house, that Maggie is now part of our life. Um, and Mrs. Dickinson now is, I think, trying to find her way to find her position and keep her self-worth and self-pride going. I personally am happy for anyone else to help at any time. <laughs> I like a clean home and I'm very organized and, uh, the sense of order in my brain is helped by the sense of order in my home. So that is perhaps how I am similar to Mrs. D, but otherwise I'm, I'm pretty happy to have anyone else help at any time. <laughs> and her, her relationship with her husband is a, is a little bit distant. I, I'm sort of thinking of all those oysters. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's trying to rekindle, I think, her physical relationship with her husband now that the kids are older and uh, moving out of the house, but it technically is next door or just upstairs. Um, what is kind of fascinating about the Dickinson family is that they never moved away from each other and all lived in that house until they died. I mean, every single even child lived at the Dickinson uh, home forever. So uh, they didn't really, they didn't branch out very far, um, but obviously Emily's poetry and work branched her out to the world, which is kind of amazing that it all happened from a home that still stands today. I'm wondering if, if you ever actually stop working because you've done lots of theatre work. We know you from 30 Rock, obviously you're in Dickinson. You're now the host of Name That Tune as well on NBC. Yeah. <laughs> um, Presumably you've had to take a break recently. What have you been doing? Uh, well, we all naturally got a break um, forced upon us with the pandemic. And um, that was a very scary time. I was here for the, the first wave. I was here in New York City for the first wave, which hit New York really hard. And it was um, very tough to go through. Um, I'm so happy that we have found ways that we can now work 
amidst the pandemic and uh, with all the protocols in place. So I feel really lucky to, A, be talking to you today, um, albeit from the safety of our homes, um, and, and to promote Dickinson and the season two coming out. Um, but also thrilled that I got a chance to make a new show, which is Name That Tune. Um, and I was, we had to go all the way to Australia to film it for COVID protocols to be in place. Uh, but I felt very lucky that we were given that opportunity and able to make new content to come out immediately. Um, I think everyone's working really hard, even for interviews like this, to be tested and put all the protocols in place to be able to have hair and makeup come and uh, still try to provide entertainment out in the world today. Jane, lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, and stay safe, stay healthy. Great to talk with you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You